Okay. So, I figured I should do an update. <clears throat> Share another one of my stories with you. Unfortunately, I can't provide any video for this, this, uh, this specific journey. Uh, mostly because, uh, well, I didn't record it because I didn't even know it was coming. So, first lesson learned is that mushrooms are a extremely powerful psychedelic drug. In lower levels and party doses, I'm talking like one or two grams, you're gonna have a warm, fuzzy, giggly laugh fest with your friends. It's, it'll be fun. In larger doses, things get interesting. Now, something crucial to remember is that there is a lot of difference in, in strength and quality and, and moisture content of mushrooms. The mushrooms you buy on the street, um, they've got a lot of moisture left in them, there, which <clears throat> increases the weight and makes the dealer more money. Now, if you just so happen to come across some mushrooms that are completely bone dry to the point that they are brittle and crumbling in your hands, then uh, yeah, that's going to throw your weight ratio off quite a bit. <clears throat> so let's say somebody was to do seven grams of bone dry mushrooms. That's probably the equivalent of uh, at least double that. That's at least 14 grams of mushrooms you'd buy on the streets. So, I take my 7 grams of bone dry mushrooms. I grind them into a powder. I boil them into a tea. I consume the tea rapidly, along with the solids. Um, had no idea what was coming. So, <clears throat> about 20 minutes after consumption, it starts hitting. And I'm like, wow, this is fast. This is happening way too soon. And it was very, uh, it was like wave after wave just kept hitting me. So I, I laid, uh, laid down on the couch. And that is the moment when I discovered what a powerful psychedelic drug mushrooms are and how far mushrooms can take you. Uh, I laid down and I, I just let myself go and I let myself go to this to, to leave reality and I come to this thing it's like the best way I can describe it is it's this infinitely huge tree like structure tree being that it comes up uh, like like from a root system and has a long body and then kind of branches out at the top again it's uh, it's like this transparent blue electric energy, uh, but this it's it's not just a tree. This is like it's like a building. It houses many different beings. It's like this place in the universe where everyone comes together to share ideas. So I've decided to dub it the Tree of Knowledge. It's how it makes sense to me in this reality. <sighs> So I get to the Tree of Knowledge and I'm interacting with uh, just the, the atmosphere, the place. I'm just kind of floating there and I'm like, wow, this is unusual. And then all of a sudden, in a split second, I, uh, I'm still kind of half grounded in reality. Um, all I, can, uh, I, I just shoot from like one point to another point millions of miles away that I can actually feel the force of this travel on my body. I just whoosh, gone. So I rocket out to this other point on the tree and I just stop. As soon as I settle from having moved so fast, I, I notice this being there. Uh, sitting there working away on something and so I go over and without speaking or anything, just, just with my mind, just with, um, just with uh, you know, consciousness, we start to exchange ideas. So I exchange ideas with this being and I come to realize that for, for, you know, for one of many reasons they are here to study us. But, uh, so I come to know, I come to understand that they are studying us, but at the same time, 
as I'm learning all these things from this being, as I assume that I'm having something, somewhat of a conversation with this being, uh, I come to realize that this being might not even know that I'm there. This being might not even be aware that we're interacting with each other. I might not even be actually, you know, speaking to this being. I might just be picking up on, on things from its subconscious. That's the thing about, uh, you know, other life from other places, from other times, other dimensions. Our consciousness, our perception, our reality is so completely different. There is no way we could ever sit down and have, you know, have a conversation and, and draw two parallels. Like, there's no way I could say, this is water, and they would say, that is water. Even though we might have two things that are similar where we come from, there is no way our minds could wrap, it, wrap each other around that concept. So, I interact with this being for a while, and then... I get rocketed off again to another place, and uh, I encounter what Terence McKenna spoke at length about, the Machine Elf, or what he dubbed the Machine Elf. These weird little cosmic elves are, are pretty common in a lot of people's trip, trip experiences uh, on several different drugs, uh, DMT, psilocybin, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of these different uh, plants that you can ingest, and and people have all come back reporting these elves. Terence McKenna seen them to the seen them so many times that he decided they were worthy of a name in this reality, and he did call them machine elves. Google that name, Terence McKenna. He was one of one of the legendary psychonauts out there. Hunter S. Thompson is a pussy. Hunter S. Thompson was a drug addict. End of story. A lot of you are going to get upset about that, a lot of you aren't going to agree with that, but Hunter S. Thompson did junky street drugs. Terence McKenna was an explorer in a world where there was nothing left to explore. So I encounter the machine elves. We share ideas. We, we mix and mingle subconscious ideas. And then after after I come back from that place and I'm back somewhat to this reality like it was a very very intense trip after that like I'm sitting in my living room I'm watching people crawl down my walls uh, I'm sitting here and I put my head down for a second and then uh, all of a sudden I, I, I realize I, I'm hearing somebody speak and then all of a sudden I realize it's myself and I whip my head up because all of a sudden I, I just became aware of the fact that I was speaking in a language that I don't understand. And I'm like, wait a second, I don't speak Spanish. <clears throat> so what did I learn from this? Well, <laughs> uh, I'll say it before, I'll say it again, I'm a very reckless traveler. Uh, I didn't learn too much. Uh, in the way of uh, preparation. What I learned from this is that there is a commonality in people's experiences when they're venturing beyond what we know as consciousness. And that, that brings me the greatest peace. To know that we all go the same place, we all see the same things. So, <laughs> For any of you young up-and-comers out there, or folks who think that you might be interested in uh, becoming a psychonaut, uh, best advice I could give you is study. Read, read, read. Research, bitches. Read everything you can get your hands on. But, do not take every single thing you read as fact or truth. There are a lot of fucking pseudo New Age hippie mystics out there, and because they spent fifty dollars on a hardcover book, they think they know everything. Nobody can tell you how to be spiritual. Your spirit is your own. Read, research, take bits and pieces from that. Take what works for you and make it your own. Don't assume that any of these people out there who are telling you that you're doing it wrong know what they're talking about because they're still lost in a, in a world of ego. 
another thing I can offer up to you, uh, you know, you, you new folks to this, if you're considering becoming a psychonaut, um, a lot of you won't agree with this, but one thing that I found extremely helpful, a good testing ground to see if you have the kind of mentality that it takes to become a psychonaut, is salvia. Salvia is a very powerful, very short-lived psychedelic. It will introduce you to a lot of concepts that will that that are just non-existent in this reality. Um, to exist in a world that's infinite, to move to, towards something, but to not have moved, to not be further or further away from or closer to anything. Movement without direction, balance without center. Uh, uh, Salvia throws a lot of concepts at your mind, uh, you know, to exist without a body, to see things with, but not have eyes, to perceive in its purest form. So if you're interested in this sort of thing at all, I'd say, hey, yeah, you know, before you go off and waste all your money on, on ordering all this stuff online and getting involved in all this stuff and, you know, trying crazy things, um, just go buy some Salvia. Take a puff of salvia, it'll take you on a three to five minute cosmic voyage, and if you come back from that and you're not terrified, if you're not just like, oh my god, I never want to get high again, you know, if you come back from that and you're like, wow, if you're just curious, if you want to know more, if you have to understand what it was that you've seen out there, my friend, I think you're a damn fine candidate to be a psychonaut. But as always, you know, hey, be safe. Do your research, take your time, and for the love of fuck, have fun out there. Don't go into this all serious, oh, it's like, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that, oh, no, have fun out there. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be okay. Have fun, take your time, enjoy yourself. Life is a highway, bitches. Peace.